Um, sure. Our next speaker is our very own executive director. He's such a good sport. We're going to dunk him in the dunk tank after. Uh, <laughs> Immediately after. Little does he know that we did put some ice in the water. But um, Shane Williams, executive director of Keys Housing and Health Solutions, ladies and gentlemen, to do the welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for being here today. It means so much to this organization and to the people that are Hep C positive to have this kind of support in our community. I'd like to recognize the wonderful politicians from the area that are here today. We've got Jasbir Sandu, Sue Hamill, uh, Bruce Ralston, Harry Baines, Peter Fassbender. It's an amazing uh, uh, sign of, of support uh, coming from all levels of government. Uh, uh, we've got a letter later that will be read by uh, uh, Monica Verma in regards to, uh, for, for, from our mayor, uh, Diane Watts, as well. So thank you all for coming here today. We're going to have a good time. Um, I hope that they aren't serious about putting ice into the dunk tank. But uh, they, I did prepare a little bit of a speech. So uh, the 63rd World Health Assembly is recognized July 28th as World Hepatitis Day to enhance public awareness, education, reduce stigma, uh, foster tolerance and understanding. And this is acknowledging those affected and explore ways to better address hepatitis B and hepatitis C in the future. It's estimated that f between 500,000 and 600,000 people in Canada are living with hepatitis B and C and are at risk for developing complications related to this terrible disease. Viral hepatitis is a major global threat with around 350 million people living with chronic hepatitis B and around 170 million people living with chronic hepatitis C. Our organization, Keys Housing and Health Solutions, along with the folks that are living uh, with viral hepatitis, other community-based organizations, health professionals, government partners in Surrey, all continue to work on preventing new infections, ensuring that the care and support for those affected by viral, viral hepatitis is accessible. Approximately 60,000 people are infected with hepatitis B and 60,000 with hepatitis C in British Columbia. It's the highest infection rates in all of Canada. This is unacceptable. This is not the way that we should be living our lives in beautiful British Columbia. And I, I applaud all of you uh, for being here today, uh, but we need to keep this conversation alive and bring it forth to uh, our loved ones and the folks that we know within the community to, to, to garner the support that's necessary to help people um, have, live positive uh, uh, um, uh, lives and make better choices and, 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 and remain disease free. So thank you very much for being here today. We've got a fashion show and a dunk tank and a lot of uh, uh, folks that are gonna come up and, uh, and, and say their two cents. So thanks again. Shane Williams, the Executive Director of Keys. Gives me a great deal of pleasure to bring our first political speaker to the stage. He's no, or he's, he's definitely a friend of the community. He's no stranger here in Surrey. He does a lot for us in uh, Ottawa. Put your hands together, please, for our Member of Parliament for Surrey North, uh, Jasper Sandu. Thank you. Pleasure to be here this afternoon with all of you. Um, you know, as we celebrate uh, the World Hep Day today, um, I want to recognize the type of work that is done in this location here. I know uh, Monica, along with the Shane, along with a lot of the volunteers that work out of uh, Keys Society, they have done a wonderful job over the years uh, raising awareness about this terrible disease. Um, I know there is going to be a number of um, a number of uh, um, tips to us in regards to uh, Hep C. I want you to uh, take this with you at home. Talk to your family, talk to your neighbors, talk to your um, people living on your street so that we can take the message from here and spread it into our communities to make sure we make people aware of this uh, disease and that is the only way we can curb or prevent this disease. So thank you for being all here and enjoy um, enjoy the, the festivities and I'll, I'll make uh, this offer uh, if somebody is uh, willing to pay the right amount I'm willing to sit in that chair <laughs> Wow we get to dunk our member of parlament <laughs> I, I, I will be uh, calling home to my checkbook brother <laughs> Our 
next uh, guest, Honorable Minister of Education, MLA of Surrey Fleetwood, Peter Fassbender. Peter Fassbender, a uh, lot of you know, he's actually uh, was a resident of uh, Surrey and uh, uh, ex-mayor of Langley, I guess we can say that now, yeah. ex-mayor of Langley. So welcome Peter Fassbender, MLA of Surrey Fleetwood. Well, thank you, Monica and Shane, and uh, to my colleagues who serve in Victoria with me, I want to welcome them. Jasbir, I know you work hard for this community. Uh, both my wife and I, Charlene, who's with me here today, we grew up in, in the Wally area. I graduated from Queen Elizabeth High School, and you know, Wally has had a reputation that is changing, and that's a good thing. And it's changing because of organizations like Keys and other people who serve the community, who do a great job to say, you know, all people want is dignity and the opportunity to live a productive life. And that's what Keys is all about, is giving those opportunities. I've had a chance to tour the facilities. But today is about hepatitis C and B. And, you know, when we talk about days like this, you often wonder, well, what, what's the real result? Well, the result is people start to think about the word prevention as opposed to fixing problems after they've happened. And that's what today is all about. It's all about prevention. It's about saying to everyone, if you're concerned, get tested. If you know someone you're concerned about and that you care about, get them tested. Make sure that you step up and do what you can to make a difference in the lives of those around you. And that's what Keys is all about. That's what community is all about. And I want to, on behalf of my colleagues uh, from Surrey here, who serve in the government with me, and Premier Christy Clark, I want to say thank you to Keys, to all the volunteers. And when I was on the tour, I saw how many organizations, schools, churches, uh, service groups that volunteer to help here and I just think it is a great example of what community can do when they work together. So today is about getting the word out, make sure that we help those who we're concerned about to make sure they get the help, to get the testing, and spread that word to everybody that you know. So thank you for inviting me, thank you for the tour, and uh, thank you for everything you do for community. Thank you very much. Peter Fassbender. And it gives me a great privilege to bring to the microphone now our MLA for Surrey Wally, which put your hands together, please, for Mr. Bruce Ralston. Great, thanks very much. You've got a big lineup here of politicians, so I won't take too long. There's no doubt that Pep C and B are an important public health challenge. We do have a great model here in British Columbia for dealing with it, and that's the work of Dr. Julio Montaner uh, in dealing with HIV AIDS treatment as prevention, simultaneously treating those who have been diagnosed and at the same time, uh, as a result, reducing the number of people who will get the disease by preventing it. So uh, identifying those who have it reduces the number of people who might get it in the future. It's a great model. And it's one that uh, he's advocating that should be applied for uh, Hep C and Hep B. So it's an important public health measure. I'm hopeful that uh, the government will move this forward. I think they will. And uh, together we can tackle uh, what is uh, an emerging and growing public health challenge. And uh, I just want to thank, conclude by thanking Keys, Shane, and uh, Monica, and, and all the team here for the work that uh, we all do together in this community. I'm, I represent this community, I'm very proud of this community, and this is uh, one more reason to be proud of this community. So thank you very much. Our next dignitary, our guest is, everybody knows her, um, Sue Hamill. She's the MLA for Surrey Green Timbers. Sue. So I'm the gender now. You may have noticed that, right? How many of you noticed that? <laughs> um, so this is an important um, event because it does highlight an important uh, uh, disease that we have to confront. And I think the uh, motto, the unofficial motto, 
is uh, know it, confront it, and get tested. And every single one of us does know someone who um, has hep C and uh, didn't know it until they got tested. And uh, we have been fortunate in uh, British Columbia and in Canada, we have some extraordinary drugs that have um, produced miracles. And uh, one friend that I have is still here because of that. So, um, so we have a, yeah, we do have an amazing um, healthcare system, although we do have a lot of this disease in our community. And if you don't know it, you can pass it on. So, uh, this is a wonderful event. It's, I think, the third or fourth, fourth annual event that has, we've all come together and said, this is a disease we need to conquer. So congratulations to all of you again. Thank you. Sue Hanlon. And it's what, what she just said is important. If you don't know your status. Sue, 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 Sue. Sue, come back. We have a gift for you. It's important to know your status, because if you know your status, get tested and know your status. That's the message that's been put out today regarding Hep C and B. Uh, at this point in time, please welcome to the microphone, Harry Baines, who is the MLA for Surrey Newton. Thank you. Um, it's always a pleasure to uh, come and stand with organizations such as Peace, Shane, uh, Monica, and all of the volunteers. I say thank you because the amazing work that you do for the community and many people who come here for help, they would be walking around you know, with, a, with a no sense of respect or dignity if you weren't around. So I say thank you very much for giving him the hand, or them the hand that they need in order to uh, get by with, with many of the challenges in life. Um, Surrey is a, is a changing community, as you know, and it's changing very fast. Um, we have now, um, you know, almost as many immigrants here as we have people who were born here or non-immigrants. In, uh, in Canada, we have uh, this Hep C uh, disease. 20% of the immigrants are suffering from this disease, 20%. Overall, it's one in 12, so that's what 8%. I think there's a reason behind it. When I was an immigrant and I know uh, what it takes to come here and try to establish yourself, your first priority is establish, get a job, you know, find a place to live. Your health sometimes takes the second, um, you know, to, to everything else. And as a result, I think you could see 20% of immigrants are suffering from this disease. And there's a work to be done. And I think this is uh, the kind of uh, uh, organizations and, uh, and, and, and events that will bring that awareness and education, especially uh, it's needed in those immigrant communities. And I say thank you so much. And uh, we need to reach out to make sure that all of them, if they're walking around without knowing uh, that they, uh, they're carrying this disease, it's very, very dangerous, not to for themselves, but also people that they are uh, living with and working with. So I say uh, keep it up, fourth uh, annual event now. And uh, I think, uh, I hope that we would be celebrating a few years down the road. Hey, you know, we are making a difference, that the trend is turning. So thank you so much. So our next uh, event would be the World AIDS Day, which is December 1st, and uh, we're going to be inviting all the politicians and dignitaries again, and we would love to have them there as well, uh, because you know what, it goes a long way, I think, when they go back to uh, the legislative and uh, create awareness there, and you know, a lot of ears are open when, when they're talking, and they're out and about in the community. Um, as well, connecting with people. So thank you very much for, for coming. Uh, please don't leave because I want a fo photo opportunity of, uh, with all of you here bef yes. before you go. Just want to read a message from uh, Mayor, uh, Honorable Mayor Diane Watts, uh, who could not be with us. She really wanted to. Um, apparently, the whole team, city council and the mayor, is uh, in uh, Vancouver today, so they weren't able to come. But she said, please read my message, Monica, to make sure that uh, my words get to, to the ears of the community. On behalf of Surrey Council, I'm pleased to welcome you to the fourth annual World Hepatitis Day celebration hosted by Keys Housing and Health Solutions here in Surrey. Regrettably, I was unable to join you today at this event. Hepatitis 
this is serious and preventable condition, ha uh, World Hepatitis Day is a great opportunity to help create awareness, provide important public education, and allow our community to come together in support of those whose lives have been affected by it. Thank you to all the volunteers who have given their time to make this event possible with special acknowledgement to Keys Housing and Health Solutions for their work supporting some of the most vulnerable members of our community. Best wishes for a successful event. Sincerely, uh, Mayor Diane Watts. Our next guest, uh, he came here last year for the first time, Dr. Tam. Is Dr. Tam here? Okay, Dr. Tam, do you wanna? Dr. Tam is such a dynamic doctor. Last year for the first time we met him and uh, he talked about hepat hepatitis D. Is Dr. Ramji here as well? Yeah, okay, so he's gonna, he said he's coming around one o'clock. Um, just wanted him to say a few words because these uh, physicians are, are the, the people who are uh, helping them with uh, the treatment. So I wanted him to say just a few words so that our dignitaries and our uh, community members can also hear from our physician what hepatitis is all about. Thanks so much for the introduction. Uh, hi everyone, it's really a great pleasure to be here uh, again. Uh, it's a beautiful day today. Uh, when I think back about last year, it was an amazing turnout, and it's really great to see even more people here uh, at this annual event. So uh, that's really inspiring. Uh, you know, when I think about the past year and what's gone on in the area of viral hepatitis in Canada and throughout the world, I think we are starting to make an impact. Uh, education and awareness is improving. Uh, you know, Shane did a great job giving an intro about some of the statistics across Canada and throughout the world. And just to talk again, about what's going on in Canada. The fact is, if we talk about hepatitis C, we don't really know how many people in Canada actually have this condition. And that's baffling when you consider how important a problem it is. We believe the number to be about 300,000, but to be perfectly honest, we don't really know how many people truly are affected. Well, that's right. And then when we talk about hepatitis B, the other condition um, on which this event is focused, Again, the number is similar, but we do not know the specific number of individuals affected throughout Canada. And so here in BC, uh, as it turns out, we have about 65,000 individuals living with chronic hepatitis C and a similar number with hepatitis B. And the issue is, you know, from a healthcare perspective, actually we have very good tools to address these issues. When you talk about hep C, one thing that is not well publicized in the medical community and in the community as a whole is that hepatitis C is curable. Now, of course, most of you here know that, but that's a message that we need to work together to, to spread. And when you talk about current generation therapies for all comers, we can cure about 70% of people and treatments are getting better all of the time. When we talk about hepatitis B, there's an effective vaccine. But for those individuals who are chronically oh, affected, we have so very good medications that can suppress the virus huh? and stop the, the virus from copying what and therefore halt disease progression up on the and prevent complications. Okay. Okay. And so on one Monica hand, won't know you, know, you hear about these great tools okay. out there, Say that. <laughs> but okay. then we have to understand that despite these tools, in Canada and throughout the world, hepatitis C remains the number one indication for liver transplantation. And here in BC, as it is in the rest of Canada, hepatitis B provides the background for the vast majority of cases of primary liver cancer. And so despite the fact that we've got great tools, we can see that we've not yet made a huge impact on the disease from a population perspective. And when we talk about hepatitis C, and if we estimate 300,000 people in Canada being affected, well, as a medical community last year, we treated about 4,000 individuals. And that's a tiny number, an insufficient number, a number that needs to, to grow. And so this is something that we all need to work towards. And that's why we're here to talk about diagnosis, screening, prevention, and, and treatment to, to boost awareness regarding these conditions. The concern in viral hepatitis, whether it's hep B, hep C, or any chronic liver disease, is that if left unchecked over many years, irritation and inflammation caused in the liver by these conditions can result in scar tissue, fibrosis. And over time, this can reach a pattern or level that we call cirrhosis. And it's when that occurs that we can start to see the, the complications of these diseases. And the problem is, because that process can be silent for years, sometimes decades, it oftentimes delays our ability to diagnose early and to intervene 
when it makes the most difference, which is early on in the disease process. And I think that really, when it comes to the one thing that's going to help us achieve that, it really is raising public awareness, throwing your support behind events such as this, which is amazing to see this number of people out, and I hope it doubles again next year, and really reaching uh, the community. Not only for healthcare practitioners, you know, we try to educate ourselves and we try to increase the level of awareness here, but in the general public is very important as well. And to end, I want to tell you and, and share a little bit of a story regarding one of the first patients that I ever saw after relocating here uh, to BC and to start my practice as a liver specialist. And this was a 47-year-old woman who was born in Korea. And she was diagnosed with chronic hepatitis B uh, in about 1988. And she eventually relocated yeah, here to Canada in 99. And I saw her for the first time uh, just a few years ago. During my initial visit with her, of course, we talked about the usual things. I took the medical history, and we reviewed you know, what had happened over the years. And, and by the end of it, uh, we got to talking, and she became very tearful. And it was towards the end of the visit that she started to open up a little bit about what had gone on over the past number of years and how hepatitis B in particular had affected her life. And in the 12 years that she had been here in Canada, throughout multiple interactions with healthcare professionals, close friends whom she had trusted uh, with the diagnosis and family members, she felt that she had learned a few things about hepatitis B. And those things that she related to me, while very careful, were that number one, hepatitis B was a very contagious disease that could be spread by casual contact, including sharing of utensils, hugging and kissing. Secondly, that her diagnosis prevented her from entering the workplace. And thirdly, that it was an inevitable fact that she would eventually succumb to the complications of her disease. And obviously, all three things are false. And the horrible thing about this is that it had impacted her life to the point where she had really put things on hold for the past 12 years. Her dream was really to go to community, uh, community college and to get extra competency. And she wanted to enter the, the child care field. And it's something that she felt she could never do because of her diagnosis. And of course, over time, you know, and through our discussions, she came to realize that all of those issues were actually not factual. And this story has a happy ending. You know, she's gone through that program. Now she's doing what she wants to do. She's healthy. She's doing well. But although it has a happy ending, the, the problem here is that it shouldn't have taken her having a conversation with a liver specialist to, to get those facts out and really to impact her life in that way. And so that's why um, it's really exciting to see the support for this kind of event here because I think by working together, we can make those issues common knowledge. And that's going to impact millions of people um, throughout the world if we can work together in that way. So I thank you so much for inviting me here. It's a real pleasure. I wish I could stay longer, but I do have to return to Vancouver for a clinic. Uh, but it's really great to see everybody out uh, on this great day. And please give yourselves a, a round of applause just to, uh, for all your support. So Thank you. I was a little louder than I expected. <clears throat> Thank you, Dr. Tam. I guess the message that comes out of this continually is to um, be aware and know your status and get tested and, and stop. Get tested, get tested, get, get tested. Get tested. <laughs> uh, for those of you that are looking at me weird, my name is Martin Rooney. I have been involved with Keys prior to it being Keys for about 15 years. I'm, a I'm HIV positive have been since 1989, and my focus with Keys working with the HIV Food Bank, and I host an event every year called Red Ribbons for Life, and we will discuss that a little later. I just wanted to make sure you all knew who I was. Thank you, Martin. Uh, he's a very humble man, and he does a lot for the Food Bank. I think I, our Food Bank uh, wouldn't exist, I could say, if it wasn't for you, Martin, uh, doing all the running around and uh, gathering money for us for the, for, for the High Protein Food Bank. Uh, before I introduce you to our next guest, I just want to uh, introduce our management team who's there at the back. Uh, Lisa is our administrator and director. Lisa Mott, uh, Megan Bailey, our operations and HR director. Salana is our support director. <laughs> and Chris, is Chris here? Oh, okay, Chris. Our, oh, Chris, uh, at the back. Okay, Chris is our new director uh, for um, support as well. Uh, he's our newbie, uh, we call, it, call him. He's uh, been here for a couple of weeks now. 
Our next guest, uh, Petra, I know Petra, I think uh, the day I started my position here, a uh, very gem of a person. And I want Petra to come and uh, tell her personal story. And I like to just say that it's not easy to tell your own story, but Petra has been sort of the pioneer in, in getting her story out. And I, I think if you, you YouTube her name or something, there's like millions of uh, YouTube videos that come up. Uh, she's really good in the social media aspect. Uh, but the whole message is that she wants to talk about it. She wants to encourage other people. And you know, it is, it, it is a journey, but uh, like Dr. Tam was saying that uh, there's, there's hope, so people who get tested, uh, they can be on the, on the recovery path if, if they find out that they do have hep C or B, and uh, they can be well. And uh, so, Petra Hoffman, our next guest, please welcome her. So hello, my name is Petra Hoffman. And I'm happy to have you all here. We are blessed, it's growing every year. I missed the event last year because I was still fairly ill. I was here for the first event and helped actually instigate it four years ago. That's how Monica and I met. And so what I'd like to do today is just share a little bit of my story. When I first came to Positive Haven, I was on hepatitis C treatment myself. I had been diagnosed in 2008, and in 2010, I was blessed enough to receive treatment, and in the process, I'm one of the blessed few to be cured. There are better treatments on the horizon now. So, my position here is to encourage everyone to be tested, to get the stigma off this horrific disease, and I need all of you to help me do that. Yes, you take a risk when you come out and you tell your friends and family you have hepatitis C, believe me, I know that risk from my heart. And I can't do it alone. And Monica can't do it alone. None of us can do this alone. And we need to get people that have hepatitis C to come forward and to tell the world in order to get the stigma off because it's got a stigma as big as HIV has been in the past. Only 10 times the number of people are dying from this disease every year, 10 times more than AIDS and HIV. So we've got to nip it in the butt and we can only do that by relieving the stigma and working together. And together we can do great things. So I encourage you all to be tested. Number one thing is it's a separate test. And even all doctors don't know enough about this disease to encourage that test in all cases. So you must demand it. Everybody is at risk. It's blood to blood transfer. If you've seen a dentist in the past, you can be at risk. Tattoos, piercings, nail clippers, you name it. Anything blood to blood. We're all at risk, baby boomers. 1945 to 1965, I'm one of them, are hardest hit by this disease. Please encourage yourself and others to be tested and help us nip this butt in the butt for once and for all. Thank you. Thank you, Petra. I know how difficult it is to Thank stand up there much. and speak to yeah. your own issues and, and make them public. It's it not means, easy. Means